is just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdates 21128.7 On the 18th day of Moistmas, my whole crew gave to me a finger-sized skateboard and some floor cleaner gel. Are these gifts meant to be some sort of cryptic epiphany for me to build something from them? Because I'm really starting to get confused here, and a tad frustrated. So today, rather belatedly, I thought what we could do is go over the seven-day suspension which has been dubbed a ban of Hassan Piker. I believe someone else got banned as well by the name of Vosh? And with this, I get to insert a disclaimer, because we're going to go through both regardless. I do not support the ban of anyone on any platform. Of course I don't. When it comes to words, of course not. If you are caught doing certain things to people or animals that are criminal, yeah, no, bye, ta-ta. I firmly believe that if you give words more power than they need, and by doing so then punish someone for using words that you've given power to, you are putting these words on a pedestal to the point where only certain people can use them in certain contexts, and by extension, you are making it a lot harder for people to be able to talk. There is a window, if you can make one with your hand, your index finger and thumb, make a window with both your hands. Acceptable language lives inside that window you've now made. As the years have gone by, that window has progressively gotten smaller. So jokes made by people who are a bit edgier five years ago do not float now, because that window is again getting smaller. That's not necessarily a good thing, nor is it a bad thing. It is entirely subjective based on the individual. It is why you rarely hear me use profanities here or when I stream. The reason why is because I have to adhere to certain rules. Those rules are imposed upon me by YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and any other platform I frequent. BitChute seem pretty good on this though, so by all means, go there and subscribe. Linked in the pinned comment with all my other sources because I'm still banned off Linktree down below. I'm not salty, I swear. So with the suspension of Hassan Piker, we are going to address this as it is. And not with my opinion, because I've now given it to you. And if that was too much, the shorthand. I do not support Hassan Piker being given a 7 day suspension from Twitch. Okay. So streamer bans Twitter account. Twitch partner Hassan has been banned. Twitch Hassan retweeted it, yes, it is exactly what you think it is. Anti-white racism for using the term cracker. Now I'm going to give some context here because it does matter. In the UK, cracker is not a, well, pejorative. It is not an insult. It is not used. When we talk cracker, we talk Christmas cracker, the cracker you put your cheese on. Someone who is mentally crackers. And of course, the far more notable cat we used to have here until she passed away. F in the comments for crackers. In some areas of the world, the word cracker is used as a pejorative and a slur aimed at some people because of the color of their skin. Whether you are yourself a cracker as you have called yourself Hassan is irrelevant to Twitch. What actually happened was, two of Hassan's mods actually got 30 day bans for calling someone on Masterchef a cracker. Hassan then went on to defend his mods, indicating it was not a big deal, and then he ended up getting a 7 day suspension for it as well. Interestingly, Vosh also got a bit of attention, because I noticed Hassan trend, I also noticed Vosh was trending. And the reason why is because he also got banned, well suspended, from Twitch. And this video clip should provide suitable context. Is Karen a slur then? Yes. Literally, yeah. Yes, Karen is a heavily gendered term. Yeah. Accept it. Be a Chad. Is Karen a slur? Yes. And I will use it. Yeah, go for it. Is Cracker a slur? Yeah, and I'll use it. Own that. Own that. Flex that. Don't run away from it. So as to best explain why people are laughing at Hassan and Vash, I'm going to provide a bit of context and background. Hassan was once a part of the Young Turks, and through them stood on a platform of being pro-censorship, which those that criticized him were vehemently against. The same can be said for Vash, but with the added bonus that people like to mention he has tried to skirt the idea, push the idea, maybe-ish, kind of, it's hard to tell if he's joking or not, with lowering the age of consent. 
but also he himself has confessed to formerly being a mole for Antifa and ratting on people to Antifa. Like a fed op? Like, you could say that about literally anything, you know? There are informants everywhere. I'm an informant. Why do you think I did Antifa work back in Santa Monica, you know? Uh, yeah, I was ratting out you know, names, absolutely. We've all, we've all been informants, you know? So when these two people receive bans, many people jump on the bandwagon of just because we don't support it doesn't mean we're not going to stand here and point a finger and laugh at you, which is what many have done. With Hassan Paika, he has taken his streaming to YouTube and he has aired his grievances there. He has explained in great detail why Cracker is not a slur, using language that many have considered to be mental gymnastics to justify his use of the word Cracker. I think it's far simpler but it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of it because Twitch's rules are pretty concrete. Vague, but concrete. And for Vosh to stand in solidarity, again, people were always going to laugh at it because did you think for a second they weren't going to ban you for using a word they banned someone who is vastly bigger than you for seven days? The main argument from Hassan comes from historical and racial issues. That's his perspective on it. He has a point in some areas, yes. But again, you are forgetting, everyone is forgetting. Twitch's rules are concrete and vague. So does it matter? No. Does it start a discussion? Kinda does. It's not a good look on you though, when you have people like Ethan Klein defending you by saying, nobody was offended when I did whiteface because it's a stupid joke with no real consequences and no history of oppression. Slave train. Twitch banning Cracker is giving oxygen to white identity politics and putting white grievances on equal footing with actual oppressed people. I thought it was far simpler than that. By simply removing the word, they were stopping that from even happening in the first place. And also, it's literally one word. Then again, I'm not entirely sure you want to be the right person to defend Hassan Piker, Mr. Whiteface. Because... When you streamed with iDubs, there were so many N-words and F-slurs in that stream, even iDubs looked uncomfortable. And he's well known for using those words. Pot Kettle Black You. If it's okay for you to use those slurs, why isn't it okay for everyone? Or is it just certain races at certain instances and certain contexts where it's deemed acceptable? Or was it something far simpler? Edgy commentary from a few years ago, when even you back then believed it was okay for any and all language to be used in any and all contexts. I starting to understand now why you might not be the right person to defend Hassan Piker, even though there are many intellectual, sure, debates and discussions going on when it comes to the argument of oppression. Control, race, slurs, what is and is not a slur. And it's an interesting debate, I'll give you that. My view will not change. It isn't a slur but not for the reasons you're using. But it's not a slur because I'm British, and this is not a slur where I am. That's not to say it isn't somewhere else, of course not, and I have been correctly informed by people who live in certain states in the US where that is a slur. Doesn't change my view on it though. Because again, I don't want to give words power. The only time where that becomes an issue is where I have to abide YouTube and Twitches and Twitters and nearly every other platform's terms of service so I don't use language that could cause either offence or be deemed problematic. You know that thing where you create a monster? Yeah, this seems oddly applicable, doesn't it? One of the best tweet threads I saw discussing this came from Claudia Brown, who I believe at one point was known as the ranting feminist. I'm not offended by Cracker, but I also don't have a problem with Twitch deciding that racial comments made about white people can be a bannable thing. I think it depends on the context of what's said because there are things I think it's acceptable to ban for. Personally, I don't care about cracker or jokes about white people, but I also think it's really just not good optics and probably best to just avoid these kind of words generally because it's very alienating. It also just ends up being a form of bullying sometimes even if it's not racism. I personally do think that some people are genuinely just hateful towards white people. Can these people systemically do harm to white people? Not really. Is it even that big of a deal? Again, not really. That said, 
I do think it's okay to ban people if they're being genuinely hateful or using words like cracker out of hate. It's against the TOS because yeah, it's a racial slur. At least if you defend it, you could just admit it's a racial slur. But say you don't think it really matters since white privilege is a thing. With one of the better replies underneath going into depth about the argument of institutional power, which is where a lot of the debates are heading. Hello everyone, future Meg here. While I was editing this video I realised I left out something. It is anecdotal evidence, by all means discard it. It comes courtesy of my stepbrother, who is one of those dreaded pale-skinned soulless individuals. So yes, he's ginger and worst of all, he's white. He moved to Australia for a while but came back. When asked about why he left because it was his dream place to live, turns out he himself was the victim of racism because people who were not white there were treating him as if he was less than anything, treating him like trash. And when he inquired, they told him it was because of the colour of his skin. Which, by the way, is not reverse racism. It is straight up racism. Please stop creating a term, a catchy little buzzword, like the reverse flash, because it isn't what it is. And by using this goalpost shifting, structures of power nonsense, in the context of discriminating against colour of skin, all you do is create a breeding ground for other forms of racism to be given a pass. Eventually there will be even worse backlash than there already has been and no that's not a threat. It is an inevitable state of events. If you don't tackle a problem, then the problem will persist. If your solution involves tearing someone down, you are not solving the problem. All you're doing is replacing it with another problem, and then trying to normalise it as acceptable. I'm also going to insert this here in case someone inevitably misunderstands earlier points I've made. Just because I'm discarding points does not mean I am in any way taking a side. I made it quite clear at the start what my point and view and perspective was. And I'll be honest, I couldn't care less. I will say this again, Hassan should not have been given a seven day ban. That doesn't mean that Claudia Brown's tweet is 100% accurate, but I do believe the overarching argument she makes within it, I say overarching, parts of it that I agree with, there are a couple bits I don't, of course I don't. Like the banning part, I never support bans, but when it comes to using language that is hateful or intentionally hateful, yeah, there are issues there. Does it matter if the person saying it is themselves a cracker? I'll let you all decide in the comments down below. Oh, so just because someone might ask, no, I don't support Vosh being removed either for his solidarity with his brother-in-arms, fellow Cracker. 